Singapore City has recently upped its full year growth outlook for a number of Asian economies. Take a look at this. Indonesia, Malaysia, Taiwan among the countries to be upgraded by city thanks to their better than expected performance in the fourth quarter. Well, Joanna Choi is Asia Pacific Chief Economist at City. She joins us now live from Hong Kong. Joanna, great to have you with us today. So looking at these uh, uh, economies that you have upgraded so far, we've got Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand and uh, Taiwan. Yes, that's right. Um, I think in the fourth quarter, we saw very, very strong trade numbers across all Asian countries. And I think not only trade numbers are very strong, but the domestic demand story was also quite resilient. So that's part of the reason why we have upgraded a number of our uh, GDP growth forecasts. Okay, so for those uh, uh, five economies that I just mentioned, it really is all about domestic demand. Well, it's domestic demand and also exports, which also have a filter in impact on domestic demand as well, have also been quite strong, especially at the end of last year. And we expect that that will have a little bit more momentum going into the first half this year. Mm, okay. Now, I notice it's not only your GDP forecast that you're upgrading. You're actually changing your forecast here on monetary policy in terms of what you're expecting, which is the first bank that's going to move in the Asian region. That's right. So actually we changed it in January. So the leaders and laggards of policy rate hiking cycle in Asia have shifted. We now expect, with the, expect, with the exception of Vietnam in November last year, Malaysia will now be the first central bank to hike interest rates by 25 basis points this Thursday, uh, and possibly even uh, Thailand and India in the next couple of months. Meanwhile, we've actually pushed back our rate hike call for Korea uh, to the second half of this year. Uh, could you talk to us about Korea? I mean, this is certainly an interesting one in terms of monetary policy, given uh, just at the end of last year it was expected that Korea could well be one of the first economies to lift interest rates. No, absolutely. I think there's been a huge uh, rethinking and debate within Korea about whether interest rate hikes should be used as a tool to address property and mortgage lending. And it seems like some of the debate has, that has kind of lost favor. And we've had increasing influence from both the, you know, the Ministry of, of Finance and also the fact that the BOK governor is now going to be stepping down uh, by the end of this month. So I think there's been a, a shift in policy tone, and that's why we expect uh, they're not going to be hiking till the second half of this year. I'm interested, Joanna, in what you're expecting to see from China. Of course, this has been very much in focus after the last little while, in particular with regards to the moves that we've ever already seen from the PBOC. Sure, no, absolutely. I mean, after we had a 100 basis points reserve requirement hike in the last two months, and we also had even a selective reserve requirement hike of an extra 50 basis points for a few banks, plus a more aggressive curbs on lending, I think in the near term we could still see more reserve requirement hike. We expect possibly another 100 basis points. Uh, we do expect, because of political factors, uh, the timing of the renminbi appreciation has been delayed by a couple of months. So we expect it sometime in the latter part of the second quarter. Uh, we don't expect it happening anytime very soon, especially not until after the NPC meeting. Uh, and meanwhile, we don't expect any uh, actual rate hike until the second half of this year. So we expect about an 81 basis point rate hike in one year lending and deposit rate. And we expect that to wait a little bit longer until we start seeing headline inflation move at a much higher level, such that policymakers will be very concerned about the negative real deposit rates before they actually hike uh, policy rates. Okay, Joanna, on the basis of, this, uh, of these forecasts, let's talk macro strategy FX first up. Sure. I mean, obviously in the near term, the dollar Asia has a little bit been confused by what's going on with the euro and risk appetite. So we're still kind of stuck in a range between euro dollar weakness and sort of dollar Asia kind of been on a range. But I do think going into the second half of this year, there is more room for dollar Asia to diverge versus what's happening in euro dollar, uh, in particular because we do expect that the global outlook, especially the U.S. recovery, will be fairly much intact along with EM demand, and that should, of course, drive further, better performance of exports and overall capital inflows into Asia. So we do expect that dollar Asia will continue to head lower. And at the moment, our favorites continue to be Korean won, INR, and IDR. Um, IDR, in particular, has been uh, much more well supported uh, because, you know, at the moment, we don't expect Fed to be hiking interest rates anytime soon. Joanna, we've got 20 seconds. What about sovereign credits? Sovereign credits, I think, you know, sovereign credits have rallied a lot already as it is. Uh, now, the question is how much more rally do we expect? I think in the near term, as long as liquidity remains ample, we continue to remain at these uh, relatively tight levels. Uh, but having said that, I think, you know, room for significant outperformance from here may be capped by the relatively low absolute yields that we already have at the moment. Mm.
All right, Joanna, great to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us.